Let's have a look at question 36. John wanted to find out how the number of butterflies landing on a flower was affected by the size of the flowers. Don't you think that this statement is very similar to how aim of the experiment is being phrased? Right, where the keywords are how something affects something. Okay, so whenever we see something like that, we will put a box around the keyword how and the keyword affect and then we're going to underline anything in between the word how and the word affect and then anything from the word affect to the full stop. So this is important for us to identify the two variables. Okay, so in any experiment, there are two variables. One is called the change variable and the other is the measured variable. Alright, now which one do you think is the change variable? The change variable is whatever that we are testing. The measured variable is essentially our results. Which one is the change variable? Is the size affecting the number of butterflies landing on the flowers or is the number of butterflies landing on the flowers affecting the size of the flowers? Do you get this right? The size of the flowers is the change variable, okay? And the number of butterflies landing on the flowers is the measured variable. So John then plays the four flowers in the garden and counted the number of butterflies that landed on each flower. So what is it? Did they specify the garden? Because this is to ensure that the location was kept the same so that there's only one change variable and this helps to ensure a fair test. All right. And based on the results, if you look at it, we notice that the flower with size J, which is the one with the largest size, it has the most number of butterflies landing on it. Okay, And then flower with size M, which is the smallest size, has the least number of butterflies landing on the flower. So based on the results, I explain how, Okay, same thing, keyword, put a box around how something affects something. So when we are answering, we're going to use the exact variables, how the size affects the number of butterflies land landing on it. So we'll say as the size of the flowers increase, the number of butterflies landing on the flower increases. This is how we would phrase our answer. Okay? Let's look at the next part of the question. John also wanted to find out if the color of the flowers affect the number of butterflies visiting it. So if is my keyword, if something affects something. So now we have the two variables again. The variable behind, the number of butterflies visiting the flowers is the same as the one on top, right, in the earlier information that they have given you. But now they want to change the variable that we are testing, which is the color of the flowers. Previously, what was the change variable? It was the size of the flowers. So now we are testing the color of the flowers. The color of the flowers become the change variable. So in order to do that, what are the changes that John has to make to make uh, to ensure that his set experiment can now be carried out? So what are we going to do? We are going to make the size of the petals the same because we are no longer testing the size of the petals. But we must make sure also that the color of the flowers are now different. So these are the two things that we're going to do. Make the size of the petals for all the flowers the same. Step two is to change the color of the flowers for each plant to a different color. All right. Now let's look at C. Explain why it's important for flowering plants that the butterflies visit them. What are butterflies? We always say that butterflies are known as pollinators. So what exactly are pollinators? Pollinators are animals or insects that visit the flower. And when they visit the flower, usually it's to obtain nectar. Their bodies will rub against the anthers. Right? The anthers are the parts that produce and store the pollen grains. So the pollen grains from the anther would then stick onto the insect's body and when the insect visits another flower of the same species, the pollen grains will then land on the stigma in the process of pollination. So once pollination occurs, what's the next step? Fertilization will take place and the flower will develop into a fruit. With the fruit, then there will be seeds and with seeds, then the seed will be able to germinate and form a new plant and this is how the plant ensures the continuity of its own kind. Okay? 
Thank you for watching this video. If you like my discussions, please hit on the subscribe button below. If you'd like to find out more about my analysis of other questions in this paper, please click on the videos on the right. So thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.